Let me know if you can hear me. Somebody let me know if you can hear me. Oh, is that the that's the thumbs up? Yo, so check it out. I want to um, I listen to that uh that Joe Button podcast, you know what I'm saying? Yo, you know what? I should be screen recording this. One day this might be cool, man. You know what I mean? To look back on and laugh, especially if things change, you know what I'm saying? But I uh I listen to the Joe Button podcast, you know what I mean? I ain't going to hold y'all up. Um I can agree with some of the stuff that he said, and I definitely disagree with some of the stuff that he said, you know what I mean? Like for one, I don't think that when he said that M don't have no content, how did that make you feel? Over the last decade, M hasn't dropped any content. He's just been rhyming words. Do you feel like, you know what I'm saying, that that's the real? Or is that how y'all feel out there? Because me, I'm a recovering alcoholic. You know what I'm saying? I'm a recovering alcoholic. I go to AA meetings sometimes, you know, when I got the time. They got a 12-step program, you know what I mean? It's a bunch of things going on in that world of just recovery that Eminem has covered over the past 10 years since his sobriety that definitely spoke to me. That's content to me. There's plenty of songs that I felt like he was speaking directly to me. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't rhyming a bunch of words for no that meant nothing. He was speaking to me. So I disagree with Joey on that one. You know what I'm saying? I, I disagree with him on that. Like, real talk. You see what I'm saying? Um, there's some things that I agree with what, what Joe said. Hold on, man. I can't see shit. There's some shit that I agree with. You know what I'm saying? Like, when Joe said he left, he exit stage right, I was happy. I was happy that he admitted that. You know what I mean? Because a lot of things, I just respectfully try to just stay out of giving up too much information that I believe that should be shared with you from the horse's mouth. See what I'm saying? So when he said he dipped out of the situation, I was happy about that because now we could talk about, you know, Shady Records invested money into, into our first album, Welcome to Our House, right? They invested money again into Glass House, right? I got paid. I can't speak for everybody else. I can't speak for everybody else. There's a lot of people involved when you do a, uh, when you do an album. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people involved when you're making an album. You got producers. You got artwork. You got engineers. You got you know A and R's. You got features. You might be paying live musicians. There's a lot of people. I can't speak for whoever what they got paid or didn't get paid. I got paid. So let's put that to bed. Let's put the narrative that Shady didn't pay the group. Well, I know I got paid. See what I'm saying? So. That's one. But I'm glad he said that he dipped off because my original point is now we could talk about certain stuff. Mentally, he bounced. He left the label. He left Slaughterhouse. But he didn't communicate that with us. If we brothers, we supposed to sit down at the table and talk. Communication run the nation. We know that. We supposed to sit down and talk because if you don't let us know that you out mentally, you in a space where th this ain't working for me no more and you disappear. We still thinking that it's still a group. We still thinking that there's a chance that the album is still coming out. We still believe in that, you know, there's a way to fix things or any problems or, you know, and we still working. You know what I'm saying? We still we still flying out to Detroit, flying to New York. For me, leaving Cali, putting in work in the studio for an album that's never going to come out because Joe already left mentally. He just didn't tell nobody. If he would have told us, 
I would have been like, all right, cool, well, shit, I, no need for me to go flying out to Detroit and to New York and having all these meetings and conference calls and doing all this shit, trying to make sure that the ball is moving on Slaughterhouse, Glasshouse, whatever. There's no need. He's not in. He's not feeling it. Cool. But he didn't do that. And I'm glad he admitted that. You know what I'm saying? He didn't do that. So, anyway... Me and Royce put together a lot of music for Slaughterhouse that y'all never heard. You know what I mean? We put a lot of music together. We met up in Detroit. All of us were supposed to be in Detroit. It ended up being just me and Royce. And so we said, you know what? Maybe they'll come around later. We about to just go ahead and dig in. And we put together a bunch of records that we could potentially add to Glasshouse because Glasshouse was getting dated. And a bunch of records that we could use for potential EPs or mixtapes just to give y'all music. We put that work in, in the dead of winter. You know what I'm saying? In Heaven Studios. Working all night, round the clock. You know what I mean? Away from my crib. And that's the thing. It's like, I'm working round the clock. But my guy, he not mentally invested no more. You feel me? So... Since he not mentally invested no more, it's kind of hard. We not getting nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, man. This phone wilding, man. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. So anyway, I'm glad that he admitted that because communication is key. You know what I'm saying? Communication is key. Hold on, man. Wow. I don't know, this shit is wild. Anyway, communication is key. You know what I'm saying? So I'm real glad that he admitted that. You know what I mean? Because that lets you know that there was no communication. You feel me? And I agreed with him on that. And he even said, by his own admission too, that we felt like he should have told us sooner. That's real talk. You know what I mean? That's real talk. He should have told us sooner. You feel me? Um, what else? I'm also glad that he admitted. I'm also glad that he admitted that he had been feeling a certain way about him. I'm glad that he admitted that he has he was feeling a certain way about him from the for a while you know why because y'all was y'all was coming at me not just y'all but certain people y'all was coming at me a lot of people was coming at me saying yo why you taking up for M you caping for M you caping for Shady when I'm sorry y'all when um when Joe did his uh revival criticism you know what I'm saying See, I knew something that the public didn't know. I knew that there was something there that Joe had an issue with the label and M already. So when I heard the criticism, I knew Joe kind of crossed the line. You see what I'm saying? But I didn't want to expose that. I just took the shots while people was like, oh, you over there caping for Shady. You, he speak in his mind. No, listen, I know Joe. Joe is very skilled with communication. Very skilled. He would have just said, yo, this ain't for me. I don't like it. If things were good at Shady in his mind. But there was something else behind that critique. And that was my only thing. We could critique M, J, Pac, Biggie. We could critique their music all day. That's what we do. We talk rap. I don't have no problem with people having an opinion. That's crazy. You can have an opinion. That's fine. Everybody got their own opinion. No problems there. You feel me? But when I saw what he said about M's music, I knew that there was something else there. That he might have needed to sit down with him and communicate. Once again, that word, communicate. And that's why I said I disagree with the approach. Because you got to separate that. 
You can't bring hostilities or frustrations or whatever it is into your critique of the man's music. That's not fair. So I'm glad on his podcast today that I listened to and I enjoyed the podcast. First time listening to it in its entirety. Very entertaining. People thought I was throwing shots. I'm not. Very entertaining podcast. That's why he's doing so well. I'm glad that he admitted that he already felt a certain way about M. Long time ago. So you bringing them feelings into your critique of the revival. You might not have liked it. True indeed. You might not have liked it. But. We all know you kind of went over the line. You know what I'm saying. Especially questioning his integrity saying oh you know he's using the plight of the black man in America or the Black Lives Matter movement he's using that to ride a wave you know what I mean but once again if we take a step back everything he was doing on there was content you you kind of like complaining about content M but then saying that he ain't had no content in 10 years so that's why I disagree but I'm happy that he admitted that you know what I'm saying I feel like I freed everybody to tell the truth when I left the group I feel like as soon as I left the group I freed everybody to come speak their truth you know what I'm saying because people were zipped up about it I mean you know communication so look let's talk about the contract let's talk about the contract he said he wanted to get out of Shady and we wasn't listening. Look, look, Joe, don't talk to me on your verses on songs like Gone. Don't talk to me through the podcast. Call me. Sit down with me. Break bread with me. Let's talk about it like men. I don't want to be communicated with through music and you disappearing from from the text threads and you not replying responding to phone calls that's not how I rock man sit down let's talk you know what I mean communication because guess what if you wanted to get out of the shady contract Joe now I'm talking to Joe if you wanted to get out of the contract Joe all you had to do is sit down and say yo I'm not feeling this contract that's what we do as businessmen we in a business all of us signed our names on that agreement. You sit down at the negotiation table with Paul M. Shady Staff, Slaughterhouse and Slaughterhouse Management, and you say, yo, I'm not feeling the situation. All right, Joe, what's happening? What's good? What's, what's wrong with it? This is what's wrong with it. I'm not feeling it. And then we either try to fix the problems that you're not feeling, or if you don't want to be on there totally, then we figure out how to get to that phase. You feel me? But if you dip out by your own admission, if you dip out and you don't communicate with nobody, it's no way we're going to get to a solution. There's many solutions to problems. You might want to get out the contract. You might see getting out the contract is I'm going to dip out, go ghost. I ain't going to call nobody, talk to nobody, barely. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm going to just say some wild shit and it's going to blow up everything and then I'm, we gonna all be out the contract. That could be a strategy, right? But guess what else could be a strategy? Honor the agreement. Honor the agreement. If you got a three album deal with a record label, you know how you could get out that contract? By turning in three albums. Turn in three albums. You could get right out. Obligation over. Fans have music. Supporters have music. Why I gotta blow up for us to get out a destructive way when we could have just turned in the music? We was making music like that. Real MCs making music like that. Ain't Yellow like on his third album or something over there? Dog, look, we ain't dropped since 2012. You don't think we could have gave him three albums by 2016 and been here at a whole nother conversation right now? Out of the contract? Just like you wanted to be, it's different ways. It ain't the problem. It's how you react to the problem. It's all about how we view things. You know what I'm saying? So I would just say communicate. We could have we could have probably resolved this. It wouldn't be no kamikaze Joe Button diss right now. 
I guarantee that. And, 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 and you wouldn't have your feelings that you got toward them right now. Just communicate. Look, man, I came from Death Row Records. If I could communicate and get negotiation points in my contract that I want on Death Row, you don't think we could do it on Shady? Now, there was a bunch of stuff he was saying, man. And like I said, some stuff I agree with. You know what I'm saying? Some stuff I agree with. He talked about me and him battling. He put that clip up there about me and him battling, right? It was all in fun. You know what I'm saying? It, it was all in fun. You know, I, I, you know, Joe turn up. You know what I'm saying? Joe turn up and be real animated and stuff. And some of my homies like, yo, that nigga was talking loud to you. What's good? It's like, nah, that's just Joe, man. You know what I'm saying? That's how Joe communicate. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm different. You know what I mean? But on that battle, somebody told me he warm he going to warm up for me to go to M. <laughs> He said he want to warm up with me to go to M. You know what I'm saying? I'm not no warm up. <laughs> you gonna have to bring it all. You know what I'm saying? But in a battle though, yo Joe, I'm not gonna let you get in my head, bro. I'm not gonna let you. I know what you doing. See, this is what happens when you put two people who are skilled and understand the game thoroughly versus each other I know what you're doing Joe <laughs> you trying to shift the conversation before the battle even start you trying to say that content is more valuable than rapidy rap bars more valuable than syllable bars so that way people will already be in your favor when you come dropping all this content on me. <laughs> you try to fix the fight before it even starts. But guess what though? They both important. And I'm going to do both. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying. That's hypothetical man. I ain't finna. Joe ain't coming out of retirement man. He ain't coming out of retirement. If I thought just simply sending him a diss record. Or make him come out of retirement. And, and put the Slaughterhouse gang back together. Eventually on some sort of level. I would have did that a long time ago. I was behind the scenes working very very hard. Y'all don't know this. I was taking flights to New York. I was working hard trying to piece that brand back together. You know what I'm saying. I was really trying. I mean I got it tatted on my arms. I got the house on my hand with the pig. I got the Slaughterhouse logo right here. I got Slaughterhouse coming down here. I this shit is real for me. This ain't no, you know what I'm saying? Oh, fly by night shit. This is real for me. So, you know, I'm in it. For real. But we just gonna leave that hypothetical crook versus Joe battle all the way along. You know, but since he like playing so much and loading up them clips, I'm just letting him know. Don't come for me like you came for Drake. Don't do it. That's all I'm saying. Don't do it. You made a whole EP for that man. Don't do it. You already know, crooked. I'm with it. <laughs> I'm just playing, but on a serious note, on a serious note, one thing that kind of struck me in in the, in the um in the podcast that I want to talk to him directly about. You know what I'm saying? Is he said we were mesmerized. He kept using the word mesmerized. Like, oh, they mesmer. You know what I'm saying? I'm back. He kept using the word mesmerized, and I assume, and assumptions, we know that, we know what assumptions are, but I assume that he's talking about Slaughterhouse, because if you follow the storyline, who else could it be? And he was saying that we were mesmerized by M Superstardom, too mesmerized to see the bullshit. We was blinded. By our, our our infatuation for Eminem. Joe, if you don't get the fuck out of here. If that's what you meant. If you don't get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Dude. I took offense a little bit. Because let me tell you something. If I don't spot the bullshit in this industry right here. Then mouths that I feed. Will go hungry. So to imply. To use a, a huge platform. That he has. To imply that I can be mesmerized by somebody to the point where I'm going to sacrifice the food on my table 
That's not going down, bro. I got too many mouths to feed. I'm going to always spot the bullshit. I told you I was on death row. You don't think I know what bullshit look like in a record deal? You know what I'm saying? So I kind of took offense, and I'm going to talk to him about that directly. You know what I'm saying? Because I just feel like that word right there was a little disrespectful if it's aimed at Slaughterhouse. We weren't, we weren't mesmerized. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, all that, you know, I was saying this, and nobody was saying nothing. That's not true either. Every single thing that we disagreed on as a group, we took votes. If you got outvoted, you got outvoted. You know how many times I stood up? Yo, they had us trying to scoop up some ice cream in New York one time. A meet, meet and greet at an ice cream shop, right? I said, man, I'm not scooping no motherfucking ice cream. That shit is crazy to me. They told me, yo... You wildin'. I'm like, dog, what the fuck are we doing at an ice cream shop? Let's hit the streets. Let's push this line. You know what I'm saying? Let's get out there to the people. But that's just one of one of many things. You know, I I I, I wanted Dre to be involved with the project. I asked M, yo, what do you think about getting Dr. Dre involved with the project? I was outvoted. I was outvoted. I didn't jump up and down. I just got outvoted. So when he says that, yo, everybody, you know, I was telling them we shouldn't do this and shouldn't do that. We all were saying certain shit. But if we got outvoted, then it just flew. That was the system. That was the system. And plus, we was trying to grind. Like, this was something brand new. Slaughterhouse on a major. It was a brand new situation. We was trying to grind it out. It might take one, two, three albums to get where we got to go. You know what I'm saying? We just can't get one album in and then say, all right, I'm out of here. You know what I mean? That's not fair to the people who support the brand. I think hip hop really needed us at that time. You know what I mean? But neither here nor there. We just got to grind it out. And that was my position. Let's grind it out. You know what I mean? But. Before I get off of this, let me tell you, let me tell you where we fucked up the most. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you where we fucked up the most. We didn't put the fans first. We didn't put the supporters of the Slaughterhouse brand first. You see what I'm saying? Because if we would have put Slaughterhouse, the, the nation of Slaughterhouse, the fans and the supporters first... We would have figured out a way to give them Glass House. No matter what problems and obstacles. We would have figured out a way to give them Glass House. If we would have put our fans and supporters first. And that's what we fucked up. That was one of the biggest mistakes the group ever made. Ever made. No fans, no us. We should have put the fans first. And we didn't. We dropped the ball, and we got to take responsibility for that. You know what I'm saying? Because Glasshouse could have came out. Right now, Kanye threw out an album with seven fucking records on it. You trying to tell me Glasshouse don't got seven bangers on it? Shit. But guess what? If you put it out, now you need the group to commit to promote it. They got to clear their schedule for maybe 60 days to go on a tour. To go on radio and promote it. And if nobody is willing to do that, you're getting nothing. You can't blame the motherfucking label if the group schedules never seem to fit. But now I know why the group schedules don't fit. Because one of the members, my brother Joe, bailed out. He bailed out on the group mentally. He bailed out on the label mentally. He didn't tell us verbally. And that's why the schedules never came together. You see what I'm saying? So look. It is what it is. We had a great time. You know what I mean? I'm happy. He's doing his thing. I just want him to be truthful about shit. But I know he forgets shit. Because when I did the pull up, I was telling him about scenarios. And he was like, damn, I don't even remember that. Yeah, he forgets a lot of shit. But I just want be truthful, man. The fans deserve it. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's painting a narrative that me, Royce, and Joel were a bunch of zombies. On shady records with no thought process of our own and just following M and Paul blindly, 
like they was making us do whatever they wanted us to do. That ain't how it went down. I can't allow that narrative to live out there. I cannot. I got a reputation out here. I'm a businessman. I've been one for years. I can't allow that. You know what I'm saying? So I have to speak to you guys now and tell you it wasn't like that in no shape or form. Any problems we had, I had a bunch of problems I raised up, but I communicated. I never dipped out. I finally dipped out because it was like, you know what? This situation is never going to happen. We are never going to get to a solution. And that's why I finally bounced out. We not rapping. We not doing nothing. Let's, it's time to wrap it up. You know what I'm saying? But I just want those narratives anytime. Joe do a podcast and he put out certain narratives that I feel like yo that's not really how it went in my my opinion and 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 I don't really like that you know being painted as a as a zombie for shady records you know what I'm saying I really don't like it I'm not I I'm technically on shady records right as slaughterhouse but solo I got my own label you know what I mean I got my own people and 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 I don't get paid from shady records I don't get paid from Shady Records. So I don't have no reason. You don't hear me on M's albums or nothing. M is a solid dude in real life. That's why I fuck with M. Because he's solid in real life. But you don't hear me on that. You don't what why would I be just caping for no reason? I don't have to cape. I don't got to. So my whole thing is, you know, I'm just being real, keeping it a buck. When them narratives come out there, I got to say something. Shady Records invested. They invested money into Welcome to Our House. Everything didn't turn out how we quite wanted it to. Numbers wise. So M said, let's get back in there. This time, I'll follow y'all lead even more. And y'all go where y'all need to go. You feel me? Creatively. And we did it. And Joe had a lot of input on Glass House because there's a lot of emotional music on there. That was Joe's input. You see what I'm saying? So Shady not only invested in Welcome to Our House, but then they invested again into Glass House. And me, myself, I got paid. Y'all see that plaque when I'm uh, when I'm doing Crook's Corner? You see the Jason Ski Mask plaque? I got paid. I got a check and a plaque. So my whole thing is for Shady, uh, Shady XV. You know what I'm saying? So my whole thing is and 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 on and on uh, and anything I was involved with with Shady, I got I got paid. I got paid, you know what I'm saying? So my whole thing is that narrative that, yo, you know, these guys were just mesmerized or they're not good businessmen. Come on, just stop, Joe. Come on, man. Let's let's just keep that out of the whole thing. And, you know, you talk about your experience. I talk about my experience. We good. We good. Shady Records invested money twice. Shady Records paid me. M wanted to go back and get it cracking. Right after the South Paul album dropped, the soundtrack to Southpaw, M got on camera and said, yo, my only focus right now is Slaughterhouse. And he meant that shit. He was like the fifth member. He put in man hours. Y'all might not know this. When you're in the studio, it might take you 12 motherfucking hours to make one three-minute song. And M was in there the whole 12 hours. And whatever his ideas or trying to fix a hook or trying to do... He was in that studio working like he was the fifth member of Slaughterhouse. He deserves his props on that. I don't care if it's a new wave out here that you're going to diss the OGs and you're going to diss him and that's just popular right now. He deserves his fucking respect on that. Just like Joe, you built a media platform for yourself. Can't nobody say nothing about that. You deserve them that credit. You deserve them props. You deserve them accolades. M deserves his props. He deserves his props. We can't be out here allowing people to think that we was four dumb rappers that went and signed over there and all this mayhem was going on and you was the only one who saw what was going on. Nah, bruh. I was in the trenches. I expect mayhem. I expect mayhem when I'm in the trenches. Stay low and keep firing. You know that. You already know that. I expected problems, obstacles, who cares? We overcome those. 
We look at it from different points of view and we react to them in a different way and we turn negatives into positives all the time, our whole life. Our whole fucking life. You know that, Joe. We can't bail out after one, two things that you don't like. The whole fucking world wanted more Slaughterhouse music. And they wanted it from a big platform. Right now, we'd be on some independent shit by now. Slaughterhouse Records. Had we just turned in those three albums. Had we just stayed in the trenches and said, you know what, M, you right. Let's go back in and do it. This time, we're going to do it this way. All right, put it out. Oh, shit, that shit worked. All right, cool. Easy. Easy call. Hella easy call. So, you know, I just want to make sure that y'all know some of this shit that y'all hearing may not be 100% accurate. You know what I'm saying? Now, I know people view things from different angles. But if I'm sitting in the room and we trying to get a member of the group on the phone and we cannot, how can we progress? He admitted that he dipped out. He admitted that he didn't tell his brothers. He admitted that. All the way up until I sat on my fucking little fucking yard furniture over here and announced that I was leaving Slaughterhouse everybody in that whole building thought that it was still a Slaughterhouse Slaughterhouse had been done because Joe had been left years I'm talking about I ain't talking about for six months I'm talking about years you see what I'm saying but if you get on the phone and you like yo nah I'm still with it but you're not telling us your real problems. I wish he would have just told us and we might have been been a squashed it and you guys might have glass house, but that ain't how it went down. If if was a fifth, the world would be drunk. I stopped drinking. So y'all already know, man. That's just it though. You know what I mean? I want everybody to be peace, be easy, and I ain't got no animosity, you know what I mean? I don't I, I don't do that. I'm in a positive space right now. You know what I mean? I'm living my best life right now. Family business. You know, I got my little brothers with me. We we going for it. You know what I mean? Some of the best rappers on the West Coast right now. I'm living good right now. We in the studio. We having fun. We traveling. We filming it. It's all good. We dropping leaks. We dropping records, videos. I'm having fun doing what I love to do. So it's not bitter. I'm passionate. I'm passionate because Slaughterhouse was something special. You feel me? Slaughterhouse was something special.